In today's video lecture, we will be seeing practice paper 1, January 2022 for general science paper 2, biological science that is biology practice paper will be seen today. We know that it consists of part A and part B and total marks are 40 out of 40 marks. Part A will be of subjective that is 30 marks each which you have to solve in 1 hour 15 minutes and remaining 20 minutes you have to solve objective questions. So we will start. In section 1, basically as you know, you have 6 questions, out of that 6 questions you need to do any 3 questions. But in this video, I will be doing all the questions so that you can learn and practice all the questions and if any one question comes in final board exam, you can do it very easily. So the first question is, write the names of any 2 flowers which you have used to observe the pollen grains in your school. So we have to name two flowers and those two flowers we had used to observe pollen grains in school. So this is there in your textbook. If you see in our activity to observation of pollen grain, the flowers used are hibiscus, tridax and marigold and we are going to observe the pollen grain with the help of those flowers. So the answer is hibiscus, tridax and marigold. So you should write like this. The two flowers used to observe pollen grain in school are Hibiscus, Tridax and Marigold. Question 2 is what is atavism? So this atavism is there in your chapter heredity and evolution. It's an important concept. The answer is sometimes vestigial organs appear abruptly even in human beings. This phenomena is called atavism. Example baby with a tail. That is when vestigial organs appear abruptly suddenly on a body that is called as atavism. Example baby with tail. Vestigial organs are the organs which are not necessarily uh, needed for performing actions but uh, they are not useful actually those organs are called as vestigial organs so when they appear suddenly in human beings that is called as atavism this is the answer question 3 identify and label the given picture we can see that this is a picture of a leaf and this was there in reproduction in plants chapter so we know that this is my leaf and here these are the new plants which are growing on the edges right so what are these it is asking these are what it is asking so these are nothing but they are the new plants okay which are grown from the adventitious buds so see what are these and it is asking us to label the given picture and also to identify the picture so the given picture is of bryophyllum so i'll write the figure's name bryophyllum and then i'll name this young plants developed from adventitious birds both you have to write because it is telling identifying as well as labeling Question 4. How do you appreciate the role of pituitary gland in our body? For showing you pituitary gland, I would like to say that it is present below the hypothalamus as you can see here. And this pituitary gland actually it is very important for our human body because it almost uh, produces hormones. Okay, important, important hormones. And that is why pituitary gland is also called as master gland. Okay, so we'll see its functions. You will write, the main function of pituitary gland is it produces and releases several hormones that help carry important bodily functions including growth, metabolism. That is how our body transforms and manages the energy from the food we eat. That is called as metabolism that is being uh, released by pituitary gland. Then for reproduction, for response to stress or trauma, for lactation, for water and sodium salt balance, for labor and child childbirth. There is one more hormone, FSH, that is also released by pituitary gland so it is responsible for performing so many functions question 5 what questions do you ask a paleontologist to know more about fossils see paleontologist is a person who studies the history of the earth okay so uh, about fossils what can you ask a person who studies the history of earth first question how do you organisms form how do we know the age of fossils why do we study fossils can you tell some examples of fossils? How are fossils preserved? Because the persons who are paleontologists, they will know about fossils also as they study the history of life on earth from so many years. So, uh, they will know about fossils. So, we can ask all these questions about fossils. Sixth question, complete the given table. So, in this table, this table, uh, stimulus and body movements, it is there in coordination chapter in your biology textbook. Response of plant to light is called as phototropism. When the plant responds positively for gravitational forces, it is called as geotropism. When the plant goes away from rock or wall where water is available in the soil, that is called as hydrotropism. 
then we have similarly thigmotropism then chemotropism is the type of response where plants respond to chemicals so all these are there on page number 112 you can check that this is phototropism which uh, stimulus is there for phototropism movement towards light similarly for water what is the movement hydrotropism then chemotropism will give us which stimulus it responds to chemicals then earth gives which movement geotropism so this is my answer okay section 2 question 7 mendel selected pea plants for his experiments state the reasons so mendel chose pea plant for his experiments because first of all pea plant has well defined characters well defined characters means basically it has so many pair of uh, seven pair of contrasting characters like color of flower position of flower color of seed shape of seed shape of pod color of the pod length of the stem then it has bisexual flowers. These plants are predominantly self-pollinating. They are suitable for cross-pollination. So they are also can self-pollinate and they can also uh, cross-pollinate. So that is the reason because of so many characteristics, Mendel had chosen this plant for a study. Um, and pea plant is an annual plant with a short life cycle of one year. If the plants produce very fastly, that is within one year if they die and other plants we are able to see means we can easily see on how many species, what are the changes and also that's why Mendel had chosen this pea plant and one more uh, feature why Mendel had chosen pea plant is that pea plant can be grown in many parts of the world. Question 8. What methods do you suggest to your friend who wants to propagate ginger, potato and onion in this kitchen garden? In this question it is asking methods to grow ginger potato and onion by ourselves in our kitchen garden so methods means it is from the chapter reproduction in plants so let us suggest the methods in your textbook it is given that the plants can be propagated with the help of stem so i would suggest my friend to propagate ginger potato and onion by the method of propagation of stem now since it is a four mark question i cannot just write propagation by stem i should also write all the three separately how i'll do so in the textbook only it's given that ginger will have roots called rhizomes now i need to cut these rhizomes into pieces and then i will plant each piece of ginger below soil with the buds pointing upwards when i do that new ginger will grow ginger and rhizomes these are the keywords here similarly for onion bulb i will take the root part of onion that is onion bulb and I will select the part which has nodes above it. You can see the eyes on it, right? That of potato tubers. And I will plant it inside the moist soil and cover it. Question 9. What would happen if mitotic cell division stops in an organism once they complete their growth? We know that there are two types of cell divisions. Mitotic cell division and meiosis cell division. Meiosis and mitotic. Mitosis. Let us see how or what will happen if mitosis stops mitosis is important to multicellular organisms mitosis generates new cells which are essential for growth and also for the replacement of worn out cells that is cells which get damaged or cells which die such as in skin cells we can replace that with the help of mitosis division and also mitosis is the primary means of a sexual reproduction for many single-celled organisms. Without mitosis, no species would be able to reproduce and the living things will be on the verge of extinction. Words of extinction means they will die. So as a result, there will be no cell growth and cell reproduction and also genetic information cannot be passed on with the help uh, if mitosis is absent in an organism. So mitosis is very important. Question 10. Represent reflex action in the form of flow chart with the given words. Afferent nerve, stimulus, afferent nerve, interneuron and effector organ. From these options you have to choose and write. First we know that uh, stimulus that is a signal will be given to afferent nerve. So second is afferent nerve. Any signal is passed from afferent nerve to afferent nerve with the help of a neuron called as interneuron. So third is interneuron. Then fourth will be it is passed to efferent nerve. So fourth is efferent nerve. And fifth is effector organ. From effector neuron, it will pass to effector organ. Question 11. What is meant by double fertilization? How does it occur in flowering plants? This is a very important question. It can be asked in 
four types or four ways i'll tell you what are the four ways this question can be asked whatever four ways the question has asked you have to write the same answer okay c it can ask you describe the life cycle of a flowering plant with the help of neat label diagram or explain double fertilization in flowering plants with neat diagram or describe the life cycle of a flowering plant or what is meant by double fertilization how does it occur in flowering plants this is asked in practice paper 2 of 2022 but in these three ways also it can be asked okay so let's see the answer life cycle of a flowering plant first of all we have mature plant which grows and it can reproduce either by fertilization or pollination pollination or fertilization then it develops into zygote embryo then into simple fruit that forms into seed it grows seedling again it develops into mature plant see life cycle of flowering plant you have to explain this okay this uh, diagram you learn it you practice it first you have to draw this diagram if it asks about double fertilization in flowering plants okay so in this if you observe here first of all what happens whenever a plant a flower is growing what will happen pollination occurs and when pollination either pollination can occur okay or fertilization can also occur we know that and in fertilization what happens male and female gametes fuse together to form zygote zygote forms embryo embryo again develops into a simple fruit and we know that again from simple fruit we get seed it grows it forms into seedling again roots grow and then again it forms into mature plant so this life cycle continues that only you have to explain so it is a very easy answer very scoring it is asking for eight marks so you should not leave it uh, practice it well draw the diagram and explain all these steps till this step we saw mature plant reproduces by pollination or fertilization we saw what is pollination we saw what is fertilization and till now zygote is developed now let us see the remaining steps fourth step is formation of fruit and seed after fertilization a combined cell that is zygote grows into an embryo within a seed formed by the ovule See, we know that zygote is developed into embryo. See in the figure. Zygote is developed into embryo. Each seed contains a tiny plant called an embryo which has root. So the seed will contain a uh, tiny plant and that tiny plant will contain root, stem and leaf parts. And these will be ready to grow into a new plant whenever favorable conditions occur. Favorable conditions means the conditions which are required by plant. So, another part of the flower that is the ovary, it grows to form fruit, protects the seed and, and it separates them from the parent plant to continue the life cycle. They by life cycle of flowering plants continues. See, these are the steps which we saw just now embryo grows into simple fruit that simple fruit will have seeds right uh, leaves and stems and they will grow okay and they form seedling and then again they form into new plant and then again new plant grows it matures then again it produces a pollination and fertilization so the life cycle continues this is a very important answer for double fertilization learn it 12th question explain the procedure you followed to demonstrate that stem is positively phototrophic and roots are positively geotrophic we know that in the plant we have stems and roots so we have to say the procedure we followed in the activity to show demonstrate means to show to show that stem is positively phototrophic positively phototrophic means it bends towards sunlight because phototrophic means bending towards sunlight and roots are positively geotrophic means they are attracted by the earth okay so let us see the answer now this answer is there on page 110, activity 5. First point is, you're going to take a glass jar and fill it with soil. You're going to sow a bean seed near the wall of the jar. This helps to observe how root and shoot are growing. Second point, after 4 to 5 days, you will notice that the seed germinates. Next point, keep the jar under the sun. Observe how root shoot grows. Then tilt, that is... Uh, change the direction of the glass jar and keep the plant horizontally. 
then you are going to observe the duration of root and shoot growth for more than a week then observe the plant growing towards light and see how auxins act on bending of stem to show a response to the sunlight that is we observe this from that that is auxin hormones they act on bending of stem they show a response to sunlight then more auxin collects on the shaded side of the stem so cells on that side grow faster on opposite side cells grow slower to make the stem bend we are going to collect bending and straight portion of the tender stem and we are going to take transverse section of both stems observe them under microscope for observing how roots are geotropic we are going to cover the tip of stem with a cylinder of metal foil and we are going to expose the plant to light coming from that side the characteristic bending of the ceiling did not occur so when light was permitted to penetrate that is go inside the cylinder bending occurred normally they stated that means we state that when seedlings are freely exposed to lateral light some influence is transmitted from upper to lower part causing the material to bend that is causing the roots to bend towards that side you can see figure 20 which is elongating right that also you have to draw and that shows us that roots are bending towards the uh, ground that is geotropism so we have explained both geotropism activity and phototropism activity okay roots towards geotropism and stems towards phototropism 13th question describe the structure and function of cerebrum here it is asking about cerebrum which is a part of brain we have to explain structure as well as functions structure means how it looks functions means what it performs first we have to draw the diagram of brain brain consists of cerebrum this large part which you see is cerebrum then corpus callosum diencephalon pons veroli cerebellum spinal cord medulla oblongata and pituitary gland So you should write the function of the brain is to act as control center. Brain consists of forebrain, cerebrum, and diencephalon, midbrain, optic lobes, hindbrain, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata. That is, brain has forebrain, which consists of cerebrum. Okay, so we should also write about forebrain and also write about cerebrum. In forebrain, we have olfactory lobes. These club-shaped, widely spread bodies are visible from the ventral surface only. The function is these are concerned with the sense of smell. Then write about cerebrum. It consists. Why are we writing about cerebrum? Uh, why are we writing about forebrain also? Because in forebrain we have cerebrum. So you have written about olfactory lobes and also cerebrum. Write they are contra- containing two lobes, central hemispheres, elevations gyri, depression sulci. Sulci are very prominent and divide each hemisphere into four lobes. Then write the function of cerebrum. That is, it acts as seat of mental abilities, controls thinking, memory, reasoning, perception, emotions, and speech. It interprets sensation and responds to cold. heat and pressure okay if you want you can also write about diencephalon but my suggestion is still cerebrum is enough for this answer okay so from what brain contains to the diagram of brain to what is the function of cerebrum write till there 14th question last question read the information given below and answer the questions see these type of questions which are there in which you have to see and write these are very scoring so i would suggest you to attempt these type of questions okay So you have evidences of evolution, homologous organs, analogous organs, embryological evidences, and fossils. It is telling you what are homologous organs, organs which are structurally similar but functionally different, analogous organs, organs which are structurally different but functionally similar, embryological evidences, resemblance among the vertebrate embryos of different animals from fish to man. Fossils are the evidence of life forms which have been preserved by natural process. So. The questions which are asked from this paragraph are first question is what are fossils and that is already mentioned in the paragraph you can r- see and write that see line wise you should write evidences of life forms which have been preserved by natural process are called as fossils answer one uh, write line wise don't write in the box okay second question give examples of homologous organs examples of homologous organs is there in the textbook so learn each line of the textbook okay that is the key because you see that from uh, in my video totally all the things i have taken from biology tsscrt textbook only okay so be perfect from the with the textbook i'll see these are the examples of homologous organs you see that all are very similar in structure but actually the function of them is different you know that right the function of uh, the hand in man is different for cheetah it is different right for whale it is different and for bat it is different functions are different but structurally if you see they are same that is called as homologous organs homo means similar so you can write for this internal structure of phloem of a whale wing of a bat leg of a cheetah claw of a mole and hand of a man okay that as examples you can write okay
are examples of homologous organs. Last question, what is embryology? This question is also there in the paragraphs. C. Embryology is the remarkable resemblance among the vertebrate embryos of different animals from fish to man. That you should write. So this finishes our part A of 30 marks. Hope you have understood this video. If you understood this video, then please subscribe to this channel and share this video with everyone. Thank you very much.